So sebaceous hyperplasia is the easiest, and these usually are, are yellowish uh, papules on the face of older adults or middle-aged adults, and they often have this depression in the center clinically, and that's because you have this kind of dilated opening here, um, and so sometimes they call that a DELL, uh, D-E-L-L, -L. clinically there's a little dimple or DELL in the middle of these yellowish papules, but these can get confused with basal cell carcinoma clinically, and because of that we will see biopsies of them from time to time uh, because the clinician wants to rule out, the, the dermatologist wants to rule out basal cell carcinoma. Uh, the uh, glands are just like regular, mature, benign sebaceous glands, except they're much bigger and more of them, and they're kind of clustered together into this nodule, and they tend to um, open into dilated spaces that often connect directly to the surface, although sometimes they can be associated with a hair follicle. But basically, they're just benign, normal sebaceous glands that are just really huge and more abundant than usual. Now, this in contrast with the sebaceous adenoma, and the big difference here is there's more prominent blue basaloid cells around the outside. You can see the entirety of the, these nests are surrounded by a thicker layer of blue basaloid germinative epithelial cells. This one also has some cystic spaces, and sebaceous adenomas, as many of you probably know, are sometimes associated with Muratori syndrome, which is basically um, so-called Lynch syndrome or hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer syndrome with the addition of sebaceous neoplasms of the skin. Um, I would say that most of the time when I see sebaceous adenomas in practice and sebaceomas, um, I feel like most of them are sporadic and incidental, but a small subset of those patients um, do potentially have underlying uh, Muratori syndrome. So it's an important consideration to keep in mind um, and the way to work that up is actually pretty complicated and we won't go into that because there's some debate over how to actually handle it. I usually just mention in my report, these are sometimes associated with mutatory syndrome and I let the treating physician decide how to proceed from there. When there is cystic change in a sebaceous adenoma, there have been some studies suggesting that that's more highly associated with mutatory syndrome. And sebaceous adenomas, again, they have a more prominent layer of blue uh, basaloid germinative cells. Scattered mitoses are a common finding, I would say. Um, I find that oftentimes in sebaceous adenomas and sebaceomas, you will get the big clear sebocytes like you see in sebaceous hyperplasia, but you tend to have a lot more of these kind of somewhat immature sebocytes. They have a kind of grayish pink cytoplasm with only a tiny bit of bubble there. They've not fully filled up with lipid yet. So I find when I start seeing a lot of these kind of somewhat immature looking sebocytes like you're seeing here, that I start thinking, oh, that, that that's one feature that can sometimes help point me to something being a sebaceous adenoma or sebaceoma rather than sebaceous hyperplasia. Also, I I just want to remind you that normal sebocytes break down and die and become part of the sebum in normal sebaceous glands. So sebaceous tumors do that same thing. So don't get concerned about this quote unquote necrosis here. This is not a worrisome feature to me. If I see bubbly mature looking sebocytes that are dead in little islands in the middle of a sebaceous tumor, that to me alone is not a sign of malignancy. That's the normal way sebocytes break down. That's how they, they, that's the normal process. If I start seeing a bunch of blue basaloid cells that are necrotic along with mitoses, then I might really start giving that some, some serious concern um, for maybe malignancy. And if I have a transected shave biopsy and can't see the base and I have some unusual or atypical feature, then I'll say a sebaceous neoplasm with atypia and then put a comment that I think it's probably sebaceous adenoma, but I can't see the bottom and it might be a good idea to do a conservative excision so I can see the whole lesion. I don't otherwise think personally that sebaceous adenomas um, or sebaceomas must have to be excised with negative margins. Uh, some people have different views on that, but my thought is that they're probably just fine and they're benign. The only time I really usually ask for excision is if I can't see the whole lesion and I have some concerning feature there um, that worries me that maybe we're on the top of something more aggressive like a sebaceous carcinoma. So here's a sebaceoma. You can see it's a nice circumscribed lobule or two, a couple of lobules. They're circumscribed. It's not very large or deep. I do start to get kind of concerned if I see deep pushing um, uh, lesions that are large and push down into the deep dermis. It's not that that has to be malignant, but it starts really concerning me if I see large uh, uh, lesions pushing down that are sebaceous. But here the tumor it has got mature sebocytes like sebaceous adenoma, but over 
50% of the tumor cells are basaloid. So that's kind of this arbitrary distinction or cutoff that we make, that if it's more than 50% basaloid, we call it sebaceoma. I'm not sure why we have that as the cutoff, but that's what that's what the, the, uh, the uh, people have told us from, from history, and so that's what we tend to do by convention. And there's a closer look. Again, you can see obvious sebocytes here, and then these blue basaloid germinative cells in the background. Now, I want to point out that mitotic figures I find almost always in sebaceomas, and again, in sebaceous adenomas too. So by itself, mitoses don't worry me. If I start seeing a typical mitotic figures, if I see pleomorphism or really obvious um, nuclear atypia in the basaloid cells, you can see these are hyperchromatic a little bit, but they're all pretty uniform. They're recapitulating the germinative epithelium that surrounds normal sebaceous glands. They're just more prominent here, but they're all pretty uniform and don't really, to me, look that cytologically atypical. Um, although I have to say, I know atypia is in the eyes of the beholder and is uh, subjective to some extent. So, uh, but what I, I learned this when I went and pulled some sebaceomas for a lecture I was giving a few years ago, I couldn't find a single sebaceoma in my entire recut collection that didn't have mitoses. So either I've misdiagnosed a whole bunch of uh, sebaceous carcinomas as, as sebaceoma, which I hope is not the case, and no one's come back to tell me that I have otherwise over the years, I'm knocking on wood here, but um, either that's the case or just sebaceomas have mitoses. So I think it's the latter, and, I, and hopefully I'm right about that. Um, but if you see, you know, atypical forms or pleomorphism, uh, that's when you start getting worried or infiltrative growth. Now, in contrast, here's a sebaceous carcinoma. And I think sebaceous carcinomas can take a lot of forms. Sometimes they can look basaloid, almost like basal cell carcinoma. Other times they look very squamoid. I feel like they tend to have a kind of an overlapping... Uh, pattern between BCC, uh, between basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. So if I see an ugly basaloid squamoid looking skin cancer, and it's especially if it's on the face or near the eyes, I give strong consideration to the thought of could this be sebaceous carcinoma? And there are various immunostains you can try, none of which are perfect. Um, and you can read some more about that in that paper I referenced at the beginning of the talk. Um, it's a little bit more than we have time to cover today in this lecture. But here, this is a, but just I think as a general rule, ugly malignancy that looks kind of somewhere between basal and squam, keep sebaceous in your differential, okay? And there's a closer look, and you can see the sebocytes here. There are little vacuoles indenting the nucleus, so clearly little lipid droplets, but they're not really beautiful, well-formed sebocytes like you see in the other uh, benign sebaceous tumors I showed you just a bit ago. Now here's a different one. This one was very infiltrative, obviously malignant by its architecture and cytologically, but it looked much more squamoid and even has some carrots and pearls in it. So I think this one, on a partial biopsy, I would have probably called a squamous cell carcinoma, but then down here we have obvious vacuolation and sebaceous differentiation. Look at that. I mean, perfect sebocytes right there and very atypical squamoid cytomorphology in this particular example. So they really can run a range. And I find the one challenge I find with sebaceous carcinomas is they often are either one of two things. They're either obviously malignant, but I'm not totally sure if they're sebaceous or not. These pictures are pretty obvious, but there have been many cases in real life where I'm kind of concerned and I never could quite find a perfect sebocyte. So, so I find that you either have obviously ugly tumors that are clearly carcinomas, but you're not sure if they're basal squam, basal cell or squamous cell carcinoma, or if they're actually sebaceous carcinoma. At the other end of the spectrum are the very well differentiated sebaceous carcinomas that you can tell clearly it's sebaceous, but you're not totally sure is it malignant sebaceous carcinoma, or is it just a kind of a big, large sebaceoma or sebaceous adenoma. So again, that's the, the, I'm making it look a little more simple than it is in this lecture because I'm showing you select very good pictures of classic examples, but I've certainly encountered many cases in real life where I wasn't totally sure. And if I see something that it's a carcinoma and it's a little bubbly, but I'm not sure it's sebocytes and the stains don't quite pan out, I'll usually say this is a carcinoma. And I think it's probably a, a basal cell or maybe a basaloid squamous carcinoma, but I can't be totally sure it's not sebaceous. And the goal there is that they, hopefully they will treat it more aggressively and make sure it's completely excised with negative margins. 